What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. So if you guys saw in the last video of the Fixer Upper Audi, we fixed up the headlights on this thing. So the headlights were disgusting, they were extremely oxidized, and we were, we were able to make them look like they're brand new headlights. So you can see that they look incredible. Now today in this video, we're gonna be working on the Audi again but we're not gonna be working on anything on the outside. We're gonna get to that later. What I first wanna address is the interior of the car. So if we take a look at the interior of the car, we can tell that it's in pretty decent condition, like physically, but it's quite dirty. So you can see that the seats, they're quite dirty, the, the floor mats, the carpets are not exactly clean. Everything could basically do with the detail. You can take a look at the inside of in here. Doesn't quite look so good. And the same thing can be said for the rear of the car. So if you come in here, it looks like there have been kids or something back here because this is quite neglected. So what I'm first going to do to address all of this and restore this and bring it back to life is first remove as much as I can. By carefully lifting up each one of the floor mats and removing them from the car, you can see how much dirt we removed without even having to use the vacuum. So take all of them out, set them aside, and you'll be exposing what's left inside the car. So with the floor mats removed from the car, it'll give us a better idea as to basically what we're working with. So you can see that we could definitely use a vacuum and that is going to actually remove most of the stuff that we have found on top of all the surfaces. So I'm going to vacuum not only all the carpets or the floors, but I'm also going to do the same thing to the seats, to the cup holder areas and any other part of the car that has dirt. So you can see that the vacuum will indeed be able to pick up all the stuff that you see here on the seat. Now any of the stains, they won't be able to come out from using just the vacuum but it will do a good enough job to take care of it and at least clean it up. And the same thing goes for the carpets down there. So what I've been using for cleaning out interiors and stuff like that, my power source is this vacuum right here. This is a rigid 16 US gallon, 60 liter, six and a half horsepower vacuum. It's been amazing for me. I've had this for the past, I wanna say four years now. It's on the first filter. It has never broken down on me. It hasn't ever tripped a, a uh, breaker, excuse me, inside the garage. I've used this thing whenever I have to sandblast stuff. I use this whenever I have to clean the inside of cars. It does wonders for me. I love this thing and using this, I will be able to clean out the entire interior of the car and it'll be able to pick up any of the loose stuff that's anywhere, either on the seats, on the floor, wherever, I'll be able to pick it up. So with the vacuum turned on, we're going to begin by first removing all the stuff that's found on the ground. So as you can tell, we did have a carpet or a floor mat down on here before, but as you can see, there's still stuff around the outside perimeter of it that didn't necessarily get caught by the floor mat. So once you use this vacuum, you'll be able to pick all of that stuff up. So whether it be rocks, branches, dirt, whatever it is, we'll be able to remove all of it. So you're going to want to do a pretty thorough job, and by cleaning all this stuff up, you're basically going to be removing all the stuff that's on top of the carpet so that we can go ahead and clean this stuff that's embedded in the fibers of the carpet. You're going to want to do the exact same steps to every other part of the vehicle. So you can repeat this for the carpets in the rear. You can repeat the same procedure to the leather seats. And the leather seats have a little bit of dirt that'll be found in between each parts of the leather. So in the little creases, you're going to want to push the vacuum down into the crack of the leather. So it's going to remove all the dirt that's found in between there. If you have any large pieces of dirt, junk, wrappers, or whatever, you want to remove all of that stuff before you start vacuuming. But it's pretty crazy what you can do with a simple vacuum. Now, even if you just go ahead and vacuum your car, it's going to look a lot better, but we can go a lot further than that by detailing everything. So in the trunk of this Audi, you can see that the person before me probably used this to go to the beach or something like that because there's a lot of sand that's found in the back of the trunk. And I don't exactly need that inside the car. So by using this vacuum, you'll be able to remove all of that. So after you're done with the vacuuming stage, if you have any salt spots on the carpet, you're going to want to address those now. I'm using a 50-50 mix of water and vinegar. I'm spraying it down on the entire salted areas and I'm going to agitate it using a bristle brush. If the areas that you're working with are really covered in salt, it wouldn't be a half bad idea letting the water and the vinegar just sit there and really penetrate itself into the salt. After that, you're going to grab your bristle brush to agitate and break down all these pieces of salt that are still clinging and hung onto each one of the fibers of the fabric. What I like doing afterwards to get rid of the vinegar smell is use a vacuum to try to suck up as much of the solution as possible. If it's really bad, you can hit it again, but that's basically my approach to removing these salt stains. So when you guys go ahead and detail the interior of your car, you're pretty much going to be using a decent amount of products. Now, the two main ones that I think that you guys will definitely be using 
is this one right here. This is a Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner. And then I also have this product here, which is a Meguiar's super degreaser. Now, both of these are super important when you're cleaning out your car. Now, it doesn't matter if you have cloth interior or if you have a leather interior on your car, you'll be using both of these to clean it out. So if you're gonna be starting off with some of the fabric, so let's say your headliner, your cloth seats, or even your carpet, you're basically gonna be using a product like this so that you can go ahead and remove all the dirt, you can remove all the nasty grime that's embedded in the fibers, and it'll pick it up and remove it nice and easily. Now if your car has leather seats, or you're working with plastic door panels, or you're working with vinyl, and you have your hand oils, or your oils from your sweat that are embedded into the leather, or whatever kind of material you're working with, as long as it's not cloth, you can use this. To begin, spray the degreaser on the panel you're working with along with inside the bristles of your detailing brush. You want the degreaser to remove the grime, but you need the brush to spread it into the material so it can restore it to a clean condition. I like using small circular motions to keep the bristles as close to perpendicular as possible when I'm detailing. I find it that using it this way is extremely effective and it gets the job done very fast. If you're working with a panel that has a gap or cracks that the cleaner can get into, I like using a vacuum to extract all of the cleaner that's on the panel because it ensures that nothing gets left behind. Depending on the area that you're working with, you'll want to have a variety of different brushes to get the job done. Sometimes it makes sense to use a large brush on larger areas such as seats or even the door panel, but it's always nice to have smaller brushes to clean up more intricate areas that have dirt in them. You're going to want to do the same circular motions as before to keep the bristles as perpendicular as possible. It makes the cleaning very effective and you're not going to be wasting a lot of time. Instead of the brush just going over top of the panel, the bristles get in between each one of the little fibers and it gets everything cleaned out. So be sure to try and keep it as perpendicular to the panel as possible. The more of an angle you have your brush at, if you just like brush it back and forth, that's not gonna be really super effective. So try and keep it like this to get the job done. If you don't have a vacuum at home to use, you can also use terry cloths to remove any excess dirt or any degreaser solution that's left on the panel. I find it quite satisfying when I use a white cloth to pick up dirt because you can really see how much grime is being lifted from the panel. You don't get the same visual representation of what's being lifted when you use a vacuum, but you for sure can see a huge difference from before and after once the panel's cleaned. You can replicate the same cleaning procedure with a super degreaser to clean these leather seats. You can really see that in this before and after shot of the rear seats of the Saudi. I use three different products, the Meguiar Super Degreaser, a bristle brush, and a little bit of elbow grease to clean them up. Just like the plastic and vinyl door panel, you can just spray it on the panel, use the brush to agitate the dirt and lift it, and then follow it up with either a vacuum or a terry cloth, and then you're done. If your seats are quite neglected, you may have to repeat this procedure a few more times to bring them back to life. You can use the degreaser on plastics, rubbers, vinyls, leather, and even paint, and it's 100% safe, it will not discolor anything, and it works like a charm. With the Meguiar Super Degreaser, you're not limited to just using this product on the interior of your car. You can use this to clean up your wheel wells, your engine bay, and even your door jams. It does a great job of cleaning all that stuff up. With most of the leathers and plastics now found on the interior cleaned up, we can now switch out products and we can begin to use our all-purpose cleaner to clean out any of the fabrics. So to clean up the carpet and any kind of fabric, it's pretty much the same procedure as cleaning up leather, but instead of using the Meguiar Super Degreaser, I'm gonna be using the all-purpose cleaner. So you're gonna need a new rag, you're gonna need the same little brushes that we were using before. You're gonna grab the APC and you're gonna spray this on basically the entire carpet. You're gonna have it like this so the product is just sitting on top of there, and then you're gonna scrub this and rub it in. I find that using terry cloths to clean up the fabrics is a very effective and very good solution to pull all of that dirt and the cleaning solution out of the fibers. Now you can use a vacuum at this stage to extract that stuff out, but I find it doesn't quite do as good of a job as using a clean terry cloth. Now as soon as that cloth gets really saturated and covered in dirt, it's not really gonna be that great at picking up more dirt. So once it starts to become brown or discolored, you're gonna to wanna to put that aside and you're gonna to wanna to grab a new one to start to clean up more of the fabric. Once you get the technique down, you're really gonna be able to see that there's gonna be a huge difference from before and after once you have that disgusting panel and you transformed it into something that looks pretty damn close to brand new. Now you're gonna be using the same product but a different brush to clean out the headliner. 
but you have to be very careful when you're using this on headliners because the way that the headliner works is you've got a fabric that's glued down to a panel. And if that glue gets wet, it's going to actually release the fabric that's on there and it's going to start to sag. Kind of like what we have in the back side of the Audi. If you guys can be careful and not get it super wet and super soaked when you guys are doing this cleaning procedure on your headliner, you're going to have it so that the headliner is not going to want to droop down. Now if it does start to sag, you're going to have to either A, replace the whole headliner, or B, you're going to have to take the whole headliner out, remove the fabric, spray some glue down on there, and put a new fabric over top. Both options are not very easy to do, however, it can be done, it can be fixed. But if you can avoid damaging it, that's what I would do. So with the headliner, as I mentioned earlier, you want to be careful with it and you don't want to put too much water into here. So if you have a steam cleaner to clean all this stuff up, that will be ideal. But if you don't have it, you can get by by using the all-purpose cleaner, a paintbrush, or a detailing brush, and a rag. So let's say we want to tackle this stain right here, or even this one, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to first do is put a little bit of the product into our brush, a tiny bit onto here, and then you're just going to want to work it in a little bit. Now it doesn't need to be completely saturated. It doesn't need to be dripping wet. You just want to get it so that it's somewhat wet and the cleaner can do a little bit of work. Now once you have it at that stage, grab your towel and you can see it's clean. Now this will dry up. If you leave it outside, it will dry up eventually, but you can go ahead and tackle any dirt that you have on here by doing that exact same procedure. And you can tell, well I can tell, I don't know if you guys can tell from the lighting, but there is the dirt that was transferred onto here, so that means the dirt is coming off of here and being put onto the rag. So that means the dirt is coming out. So just repeat this procedure until your entire headliner is clean. If you guys want to buy some more expensive cleaning tools to clean out the interior, some good tools that I would recommend is a steam cleaner, does a very good job. A vacuum is a definite must. I would probably get that over any of the other detailing products for the interior. After that, if your interior smells bad, I would switch to an ozone machine. I'm going to address using an ozone machine on the Audi in a different video, but just note that you guys can use that to clean out your interior. Now to clean the steering wheel of its filth, it depends on what the composition's made of. So this here is made out of leather. So what I'm gonna be using is the Meguiar Super Degreaser. If this was made out of a cloth or an Alicantara, I wouldn't be using this product here. Instead, I'd be using the all-purpose cleaner along with a little detailing brush like this to get in there, to get into the little pores in between each one of the fibers, and it'll clean out the fabric that way. But because this isn't made out of that material, I won't need this. Instead, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting a little bit of the super degreaser in a straight line on a rag. I'm then gonna fold it around the steering wheel, like this, and just rub it until it's clean. Just like that. Now, it's not gonna be super noticeable when you're working with a steering wheel that's of this color, but if you're working with an even lighter colored steering wheel, you'll be able to see any dirt that you have that's basically impregnated into the leather itself. So an area like this that your hands are on all the time, this is going to be super dirty, same with this, along with the backside here because that's where your fingers go. So these areas here are gonna be the heavier, dirtier areas that you need to focus on, but if you just spray it on like that in a straight line, you go over the whole wheel, on the back side, the front side, and even the airbag, you'll be able to clean this up and make it look new. Now, if you can tell in here, I've got the emblem. To clean out the dust and dirt that's in there, I'm gonna put a little bit of the super degreaser inside the brush and clean it out like that. So because the rag won't be able to get into each one of those little cracks because it's not really super fine, that's what this is there for. So it'll be able to clean all this stuff out. And because we're using the brush again, I like cleaning this up with my vacuum. and then just give it one final wipe down, and then that looks so good. So just repeat this procedure until your steering wheel or any other leather or fabric looks really nice, and then at that point, we'll be able to move on to the most important part of the interior detail. The most important part, if you ask me, of an interior detail is gonna be cleaning the windshield. The reason why I say that is because when you're driving your car, you have to look through the windshield to see what's out on the road. Now, if you can't see clearly through that windshield, it's actually going to be unsafe. So what I'm gonna be doing to make it so that this Audi is safe is I'm gonna be using some Meguiar's glass cleaner along with at least 
two microfiber towels. I like doing a full clean using one microfiber towel, and then after that's done, I will follow it up with another one without any product on it to make sure that I don't have any streak marks or any kind of dirt that's still left on the windshield. Now, what you can also do is use a towel that's designed specifically for glass, and that is a waffle weave towel. Now, you can use this to clean glass and it does an amazing job, but it also does a very good job of picking up water on the outside of your vehicle. So if you ever wanna dry your car, this is also a great go-to. If you guys wanna pick one of these up, this is called a Meguiar's Water Magnet. You guys can find links in the description box, but as for showing you guys how to do this, I will first begin with a microfiber towel and our glass cleaner. So to get started, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my microfiber towel, I'm gonna to fold it into four, so Here's folded into two and then divide that by two again. So you've got a nice little square like this. I'm then gonna grab my cleaning solution, spray it onto the towel and not onto the windshield. I'm gonna place it in my right hand, put my left hand on the driver's seat, spin this upside down, and I'm gonna clean up the entire windshield like this. Now you're gonna wanna go left and right and then up and down and you're really gonna wanna make sure that you get everything cleaned. So once you do a nice big wipe down, you clean up the whole thing, it's very important to follow it up with another wipe down. So can you see that filth? I'm gonna do it again. Same towel, spray onto the rag, right hand, go like this, and clean up the entire thing. So I like going left and right, and then up and down to make sure I have absolutely everything. And then I like to make sure that I get all the corners good, so I'll do the perimeter of the window. So after that's done, I'm not gonna be using this towel anymore. So I can put that aside and I'm gonna grab another clean microfiber towel. There's no product on here, no nothing. I'm then gonna go ahead and just wipe it down with this towel. So this is gonna remove any of those streak marks, any kind of residue, any dirt that's left over that we missed. And it should be able to give us a nice crystal clear windshield. Go ahead and repeat this exact same procedure to every single one of your windows. And if you also have a sunroof, you can do the same thing to that. So after the first pass, you should be removing a good 90% of all the filth that's on the windows. However, that second pass is a must. The reason why it's so important is because you're going to be removing those streak lines that you're gonna be putting into the glass after the first pass. So after the second one, it should be perfectly crystal clear and you shouldn't have any optical distortion when you look through the windows. So with the interior detailed, it should look something like this. So the carpets have been cleaned, the leather's been cleaned, the steering wheel's been cleaned, everything on the dash has been cleaned. All the dirt and the coffee stains that were found in the center console area are now removed, and the interior is looking amazing. The next step that you guys can do is put a layer of protection on your car. So if you're working with leather or you're working with the fabric, you guys can put some sort of protection on there to keep the finish looking this good. Now, if you guys wanna find out more information regarding the products that I would use for either the leather or or any kind of fabric, check the description box, I have links for that. The same kind of thing goes for the exterior. So in the next coming video, I'm gonna show you how to do the same kind of procedure that we did to the interior, where we restored it and made it look awesome, but instead, we're gonna be doing it to the outside of the car. So this paint is pretty neglected, the paint definitely needs a little bit of work. The reflection out of the car isn't the greatest, but I'm gonna show you guys how to fully detail this, how to make it look incredible, and how to make this car basically look new again. Before you guys go and comment, read the description box because I always put more information regarding whatever I'm doing in the video down there. So if you wanna find out more information about the detail, if you wanna find more of the products that I used, you can find everything down there. So be sure to check it out. If you guys have any other questions for that matter, throw it down in the comment section below. I really hope this video has helped you guys out. If it has, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hopefully everyone can be rocking a super nice and detailed interior. If you guys want to do the same thing to the outside, stay tuned. I'll be having that video out very shortly. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.